name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our service this morning. Just a reminder that after you've received communion, there will be anointing in the North Isle. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Gives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. 
He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised amongst all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The refrain for the psalm is, Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter had just healed a disabled man. Then Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk again? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God has raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why does doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few of us here, I gather, are on this pre-diabetic course. Of course, one of the things this course aims to get you to do is to think about the food and drink that you eat. And it certainly does that, so in that sense, it achieves its object. But it set me thinking, when I read this passage, I was thinking about food and drink. Jesus said to his disciples, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. The sharing of food with his disciples was one of the main elements of Jesus' resurrection appearances. Luke records prior to this that he had supper with two disciples on the road to Emmaus when he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them and they recognised him in that very act. Sharing a meal and the resurrection appearances are tied up together in the Gospels of Luke and John. And therefore it is no surprise that the Eucharist is an important part of our experience of Jesus. We also recognise that one of the most universal ways human beings have of establishing and maintaining relationships is in shared meals. So it doesn't surprise us that Jesus after the resurrection, would share meals with his friends. Eating and drinking together is an important way of experiencing Jesus' resurrection and the most universal way 
people affirm and experience relationship community. These two actions, the Eucharistic experience of Jesus and the building up of relationships in meals, is deeply related. We may have found that to be so during Lent. Feast fasting and experiencing hunger especially reminds us of our need for God and our relatedness to other people, and especially those who are hungry and poor. We find it when we have celebrations of happy events in our lives and families. Our first thought, usually, is to get together and eat and drink. And we find it in the sad and tragic moments in our lives as well, when grieving family and friends of the one who died must, it seems, have food and drink when they gather to mourn and to support each other. We must eat together to be human and to become human. We must also, it appears, eat together to know God. In the story of salvation told in the scriptures, food plays an important role. Food and drink can be an occasion for sin, for separation from God and from others. We may recall that the human fall into sin was caused by misuse of food. The first murder of Abel by Cain was occasioned by difference over which kind of food was a better offering to God. Israel's rebellion against God in the wilderness was over their need for food and their doubt as to whether God could provide it in the wilderness. And one of Satan's temptations of Jesus was to urge him to ease his hunger by turning stones into bread. And Judas was revealed as Jesus' betrayer when he dipped his bread in the dish after Jesus at the Last Supper. That's the bad side. What about the good side? And food and drink are also involved in many of the good parts of that story of salvation as well. In that first garden, there was a second tree, a tree giving eternal life. And God removed the first people from the garden after they sinned, lest they eat of that tree also, and as a result live forever in sin. Abraham welcomes God's angels under the guise of three strangers, provides food for them, learns that he is entertaining angels unawares, and that he and Sarah will have a child whose descendants will be a blessing to all humanity. God, in spite of Israel's rebellion in the wilderness, feeds the people with manna, and quenches their thirst with water from the rock. Jesus feeds 5,000 with one boy's picnic lunch of bread and fish. And the culmination of God's plan for humanity, and indeed for the entire creation, is described in the scriptures as a wedding feast, which lasts forever, and to which all humanity is invited. When we share a conventional meal, and when we share in the Eucharist, all parts of this story of salvation come alive. Above all, we see God redeeming food, which we've used wrongly, so that it can be a means of grace and hope of glory. We find every meal, no matter how ordinary and casual, having the potential to be filled with grace and to build and deepen loving relationships. We find in each Eucharist an even greater 
and fuller expression of relationship, which is the identity given to us in baptism, members of Christ's body, children of God, and inheritors of God's kingdom, an identity which is renewed and once again brought to light in each celebration. We've heard the saying, all of us, we are what we eat. And we find this to be true in our own lives. Our identities, all of them, are shaped by our eating. Certain foods and drinks underscore our ethnic, our national, our generational identities. Certain foods and drinks define the great holidays and important celebrations of our lives. And then there is the bread and the wine and the Eucharist. We need to know Jesus in his resurrection. We come to know him by faith, by the testimony of those who saw him resurrected and in the lives of those around us. When we gather for the Eucharist, we bring those elements together. In the shared meal called Holy Communion, our human capacity to remember, to learn, and to relate to others in meals aids us in knowing our Saviour. In this holy meal, we know Jesus in his resurrection to be our Lord and God. In this holy meal, we recall that we are members of Christ's risen body in the world. By this meal gives us one more aspect of God's saving plan as well. In this meal, we discover that we are called to do for all people what God has done for us. As Abraham, in feeding three strangers, found himself entertaining the angels of God, so we are called to feed and nurture the strangers in our midst and thereby meet God. As God fed hungry and rebellious Israelites in the wilderness, so we are called to meet the physical hungers and needs of other people, even though they are different from us or offend us or scare us. As Jesus felt the multitude with one boy's lunch, so we are personally to give out of what we have for the feeding of others. And as a society, we are to redirect our nation's material goods to feed and educate and heal a hungry world. As the ultimate sign of God's peace and the ultimate sign of the completion of God's plan for the universe is a great banquet. So we are called to make our own lives, our homes, our churches, signs of that great feast which is yet to come. We are to provide for all people the welcome into our communities, which foreshadows the feasting to which the entire human race is called. We are, as members of the church, to be the body of Christ, broken for the world, feeding all the hungers of the human race. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, 
who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with our risen Lord, let us pray to the Father. Recently, at uh, one of our many funerals we've had in the last few weeks, I was very touched by a feeling of the power and the intensity of God's love for us. And I wanted to try and share that with you this morning within our intercessions, which will take a slightly different role. Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we consider the events of the Passover 2,000 years ago, we think about Jesus risen from the tomb, bringing fresh hope, inspiring the disciples with a boldness they didn't have before. And then hearing the prophet's words, the Lord takes delight in you. He will rejoice over you. We are reminded of God's endless love for us how he takes care of us, and how his outstretched arms are towards us. Heavenly Father, sometimes we are awestruck, stunned into silence before you. Beautiful Saviour, my comforter. Holy God. Sometimes everything else pales into insignificance. And we are lost in wonder love and praise. And yet, Lord, there is still so much in our world that concerns us. So much conflict, so much famine, even the lack of clean water and sanitation. Lord, would, would you send your Holy Spirit to raise up, to inspire peacemakers, those who can bring reconciliation, those who can generate funds for agency relief, and those who would distribute it, and for engineers to complete the projects that are needed Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here at St. John's, we pray for Reverend Helen. We ask for wisdom and vision as she leads us. We pray for Patrick and Paul and the church wardens and all who serve in this place. We ask your blessing on them as they serve us. We pray for the coming APCM. We think especially of those who are taking on new roles. May they be aware of your supporting help and strength as they begin new tasks and challenges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you those on our prayer list who are not well. For Veronica, Anne, Pam, Catherine, Denise, 
Louise, and W, Debbie, and Vitalia, and Betty. And we name before you in our hearts our friends and relations we know who are unwell at this time. Please comfort and strengthen them, Lord. Give them a knowledge of your peace and may they feel the power of your love surrounding them. We ask for healing in spirit, mind and body. We thank you for the fond memories of those who have died recently, especially Robert Peake, Veronica Skillings and Doris Locke. And remember those whose years mind falls at this time. For Hilma Fisher, Rita Pulteney, and Anne Connolly. We pray for all who mourn and are missing loved ones. Grant them comfort, peace, and an awareness of your constant presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that our experience of your love will inspire and sustain us this week as we seek to live out our life and our faith in our community. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to the eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, Dying you, you destroyed, destroyed our, our death. death. Rising, Rising you restored, you restored our, our life. life. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come in glory. glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, 
and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let us therefore keep the feast. Alleluia. Just a reminder, after you've received communion, anointing is available in the north aisle. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. So, we have uh, a few notices this morning. Uh, First of all, I've got some bands of marriage to read. They're uh, away bands. Um, But George and Georgia, it's wonderful to have you and your family with us today. Thank you for joining us. We really do pray for you and wish you all the best for your wedding day. It's always exciting. And so, uh, here we go, the first of three. I publish the bands of marriage between George, Steve and James Parker and Georgia Michelle Forward, both of this parish, the parish of St. John the Baptist Church in Broadstone. This is the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. And we pray for George and Georgia as they prepare for their wedding and the marriage to come. And bless you for being here this morning. Uh, Not many other notices. Uh, The first is just a reminder that we have the APCM on Thursday, and that starts at 7.30. Um, 
there's all sorts of things that happen at an APCM. Obviously, it's the meeting at which we elect all our various officers of the church. But it is a chance to celebrate the last year of life at St. John's, and there's lots to celebrate, and also set a bit of a vision um, for the way ahead this coming year, and I'll be doing that. So do come along to it if you're able to do so. Um, you will see from my email that I sent out this week that we've had an, an unexpected vacancy open up in the PCC for year two um, because someone has decided actually to, for various circumstances to step down this year. Um, so if anybody does want to come on to PCC into year two, um, we would be able to do that at the APCM, but I would need a, a, to, to know that from you very quickly, please, so that we could get a, a proposer and seconder before the night. If that can't happen, it simply becomes a casual vacancy, and that means as soon as possible after the APCM, I, I seek to appoint for the rest of that year to fulfil the casual vacancy, and then we do the proper appointment at APCM next year. Have a think about it. If it's something you have wondered about and you didn't get round to asking me about it, it would be great to fill that remaining place if I can. It's six meetings a year, plus the APCM. So have a think about it and come and have a word with me if you think, well, I could, I could possibly fill the casual vacancy for a year. That, that might be something I could do. Uh, and then finally, just to say, uh, you'll know that Veronica Skilling's funeral is this Tuesday at half past 10. And Brian just wanted me to let you know that, of course, you're all welcome to attend that. And there will be refreshments in Northreach after that service. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we'll have the funeral for Doris Locke. Um, but that isn't until the 3rd of May, because one of the, the family members is abroad at the moment. Um, but all the details are on the weekly news. Have a look at that. And do come and join us as we make our goodbyes, firstly to Veronica, and then later to Doris. I think that's it. So we come to the Easter acclamation that's on page 10. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness he has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glo Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. This is the gospel of the Lord. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
my sisters and my brothers, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.